is a mystery. Sometimes we find out the answer, and sometimes we don't. Like if you if we leave something in our house, sometimes it's like a mystery where where it ended up. Sometimes we find it, sometimes we don't. So our um, Bible verse today is talking about a, something that's kind of a mystery. It's talking about the resurrection. That's a long word, isn't it? The resurrection. So our scripture is from First Corinthians chapter fifteen. I'm going to read verse 35. It says, but someone will ask, how are the dead raised? What kind of body will they have? That's a mystery, isn't it? When someone, after, after we die and we believe in Jesus, some, someday we will get to go to heaven and be with him. We get to be with Jesus and we get to see all of our loved ones who have already gone ahead of us. And when Jesus himself died, he was resurrected from the dead. And it was of a mystery how that happened, right? So the superheroes um, NIRB Bible says that resurrection means coming back to life in a whole new way and never dying again. And what that means is God will raise our bodies to a new and more perfect life even after we die. And nothing separates us from God. That's kind of a mystery, isn't it? So when there's a mystery that we don't understand, God says, to us. Trust me. He says, trust me. Even when we don't completely understand some of the mysteries of the Bible and the mysteries of our faith, God says for us to trust him. And faith in trusting God will be with us even through death. We are never separated from him. Even when we die, we get to be with him. So let's pray. Let's lift our hearts with our hands. Ready? Dear God, thank you for loving me. Please help me to trust you, even when I don't understand. Help me to have faith. In Jesus' name, amen. would please stand while we affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you spoke your word and revealed your good news in Jesus the Christ. Fill all creation with that word again, so that by proclaiming your joyful promises to all nations and singing of your glorious hope to all people, we may become one living body, your incarnate presence on the earth. Father God, as we gather together today, we are mindful of where we have come from and whom we have been around or with or whom we love or whom we're concerned about. And Father, in this time of silence in our hearts, we lift up to you names of persons of, of, uh, that we know and love and are maybe even concerned about. We pray for the sick. We pray for the lost. We pray for the lonely. We pray for those who are in need of a fresh hope. Those that are in need of salvation. 
those that are in need of words of comfort and encouragement. And by your Spirit, O Lord, provide for these needs. And also, may we be in tune with that same Spirit so that we might be used by your Spirit to help meet those needs in others as you see fit. And now, O Lord, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will you stand with me, please, as we sing For the Healing of the Nations. For the healing of the nations, Lord, we pray with one accord. For a just and equal sharing of the things that earth affords. To a life of love and action, help us rise and pledge our word. Help us rise and pledge our word. Forward into freedom from despair, your world release that redeemed from war and hatred. All may come and go in peace. Show us how through care and goodness we will die and hope and increase. We will die and hope. God have written your great name on humankind. For our love growing in your likeness, bring the life of Christ to mind. That by our response and service, earth its destiny may find. Earth its destiny may find. Please remain standing. Let us pray. Holy God of light and love, excuse me, holy God of light and life that overcomes darkness and death, as we offer our tithes and offerings to you this morning, we pray that we may give the confidence and assurance of those fully convinced in our promise of resurrection. Help us to experience our generosity as those who have no need to hold back or hedge our bets. We may live our days giving freely with love and grace not as those who have the hope of salvation, but the promise. In Christ we pray, amen.
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. You may be seated. Stand with me as we begin our Psalter. So really quickly, I will sing the, the, the tune of the Psalter for you, then I will have you join with the choir, and then we will begin our Psalter process. I will put you at ease in that we've already done it twice during the service with the Gloria Patri uh, and the doxology. So it's going to kind of follow that same format. So all the anxiety is gone now as so we try something new. We're keeping an open mind. All right, so when you hear this, it's time to sing, and it sounds like this. Do justly love mercy, walk humbly with your God. That's the tune. So now we're going to sing it with a choir. Be brave. Time to sing. And do justly love mercy, walk humbly with your God. Now let us begin our Psalter all together. Justly love mercy, walk humbly with your God. Do not be angry because of the wicked. Do not be envious of wrongdoers. For they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. 
so you will dwell in the land and enjoy security. Take delight in the Lord, who will give you the desires of your heart. Do justly love mercy, walk humbly with your God. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in God, who will act, bringing forth your vindication as the light and your right as the noonday. Be still and wait patiently before the Lord. Do not be angry because of those who prosper in their way, because of those who carry out evil devices. Do justly love mercy, all come be with your God. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not be angry, it leads only to evil. For, for the, the wicked shall, shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall possess the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look at their place, they will not be there. But the, but the meek shall, shall possess the land, and delight in abundant prosperity. Do justly love mercy, Walk humbly with your God. Now for our scripture reading. It comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 35 through 38, and verses 42 through 50. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish! What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be, but just a seed, perhaps of wheat or of something else. But God gives it a body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable, it is raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. So it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam, a life-giving spirit. The spirit did not come first, but the natural and after the, and after the spiritual. The first man was of the dust of the earth. The second man is of heaven. As was the er earthly man, so are those who are of the earth. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne the image of the earthly man, so shall we bear the image of the heavenly man. I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. You may be seated. Great job trying something new today, folks. Y'all did really well, that Psalter. I'm, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. So let's, uh, let's bow our heads as we pray. Lord, open our hearts and our, our minds and our ears to hear and receive the message you have for us today. May we enter this time of proclamation with a heart that is open to the leading of your spirit. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In 20-something years of ministry, I, I've had the joy of working with children at different places and at different times. And I have, as such, come up with a list. Uh, and this list uh, consists of all the questions that kids ask a preacher uh, at some different given time. And it usually goes like this. So they, they ask you the crazy question, and then you just kind of look at them for a second, kind of dumbfounded. And, and, and then you, you have to say, well, that's a good question. And when we get to heaven, we're going to ask God what the answer is, you know? Questions such as, uh, what is God like? 
or or does God have a mustache or who is God's mother and father or questions about heaven like you know will I get to ride a pony in heaven or uh, will uh, will there be dinosaurs in heaven I've gotten all kinds of questions from kids and youth over the years but I've also gotten questions from adults questions that they have that are genuine on their heart uh, questions sort of like what Paul is addressing in first Corinthians chapter 15 a question that the fo- folks at First Church Corinth had, and that was, what will a resurrected body be like? What will it be like to be resurrected? What, will, what, what is the nature of the resurrection? What does that mean, and what implications does that have for our lives? Will the resurrected body of a Christian be the same body that we have now, only maybe you know, some extra oil in the joints so it lasts a little longer or, or, or maybe a patch here or there or, or maybe something that's going to magically clear up the mind or whatever it may be. Is that what it is? Is it something made out of what we already have? Or, or will it be uh, something that is uh, like a ghost floating around, you know, like the, you know, sometimes you picture the angels with the harps and the wings, you know, or we're going to be kind of this ethereal kind of uh, uh, ghostly kind of apparition. Is that what it means to be resurrected? What will the resurrected body be like? Now, again, we must remember Paul is, uh, is addressing the first century church, first church Corinth. And at First Church Corinth, there were some members who did not believe in the resurrection of the dead, or at least they were having a hard time coming to grips with it. And there were those that did believe in the resurrection of the dead. And, and I'm sure that the members of First Church Corinth who believed in the resurrection saw great benefit in it. Uh, Reverend Carlo Works points out that, that the folks in the first century lived in a time when, when there was not access to health care. Uh, They weren't the most healthy people. Life for the majority of people in the Roman Empire was hard. For many, food was scarce. And with lack of food came lack of of, uh, eyesight. and, 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 And it would cause other conditions because they didn't get the nutrients they needed, whether it be disabilities or, or, uh, or things like that. Life expectancy back then was very, very low. I didn't realize this until I, I was reading what this, uh, this uh, one uh, pastor had researched. Less than 50% of the children didn't live to the age of 10 back at the first century. Death was a part of everyday life. For those who embrace this idea of the resurrection, hoping to escape a limited physical body that was less than healthy was certainly something that was desirable for them. The other thing that Paul had to deal with in the first century was Gnosticism. Gnosticism was influencing uh, different churches, and, and uh, the Gnostic Christians, as they call themselves, were, were ones who, who believed that anything physical uh, was evil. So our, our bodies, our cells, our hair, our, everything about us physically, this is all evil. That the only thing good in us is our spirit, because anything spiritual, you know, the, the, the soul, uh, the spirit, those things are what is good. And so they had this real big dichotomy between what was good and, and what was evil in, in life. And for these folks, the idea of the resurrection was a good thing, but only because they saw it as, as, a, as a leaving of the body. Uh, of escaping from the body, of being into that spiritual realm, if you will, floating around in the the heavens. So this takes us back to our original question. What will the resurrection body be like? What will our bodies be like when we are called forth on the the time of Christ's return in the resurrection? Will it be our current body, only reanimated or maybe patched up a little bit, a little extra oil in the joint, so to speak? Or or will it be a total spiritual body where we escape our physical limitations and float around like ghosts out there? Or will it be something different? What we need to understand is that the Bible clearly teaches us that there is a bodily resurrection our our, we will have a resurrected body we affirmed this this morning when we when we proclaimed the uh, apostles creed 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he says, So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown perishable, it is raised imperishable. The body that is sown perishable is raised imperishable. But there's something very important that we need to understand about the bodily resurrection. Because it has great implications for us. The body that Paul is talking about isn't a reanimated or improved version or a patched up version of the body that we have now. It's also not a ghost. <laughs> it's not this, we leave this body and we just become this ethereal kind of a thing. What Paul is talking about is a whole new body. Like the seed, he says, that is buried in the ground and dies. It sheds its husk, its outer covering and become something new. It takes on a new body of a plant once it has died and been buried. You see, this new body is a heavenly body. Our current bodies are corrupted by sin. But the heavenly body won't be, thus allowing us to live for eternity. Our earthly bodies have an expiration date. They will not live forever. But the heavenly body that we will receive is fit for eternity it's made for eternity paul spells it out for us the differences between our earthly bodies and our heavenly bodies in this morning's scripture when he says our earthly body is something that is perishable but our heavenly body is something that is imperishable our earthly body is something that was sown in dishonor we were born into to sin we were born into a sin nature but our heavenly bodies will be raised in glory our earthly body is sown in weakness it has limitations but our heavenly body will be raised in power. And our earthly bodies is sown into a natural body, but our heavenly body will be raised into a spiritual body. Our new resurrected bodies sound pretty good, don't they? I mean, when you think about it, whereas our earthly bodies are subject to earthly limitations such as old age or hearing loss or hair loss or disease or, or, or sinfulness or weakness or decay, our heavenly bodies won't be bothered by any of this. Our heavenly bodies will, will, be, will be the thing that li lives into eternity, that lasts forever. Our heavenly bodies will, will be the ones that will go on. Our first bodies, Paul says, is made of the stuff of earth. It's made of the, the stuff of the dust of Adam, as he says. And our second bodies, our resurrected bodies, are the ones that are made of the stuff of heaven because it has been fitted for heaven. Now, this probably leads to several questions, but I want to address two of them this morning. And the first question I'm going to talk about briefly. The second one I'll dive into a little bit more. The first question is this. Will we be recognizable once we are resurrected into our new heavenly bodies? Some people wonder about that. You know, will, will we recognize somebody when we go to heaven? Will they recognize us when we get there in our new resurrected bodies? Well, I believe the answer to that is yes. We will be recognizable. Now, how do I know that? Well, I look to Jesus. Jesus was raised from the dead, the first fruits born, the first of the resurrected. And guess what? People recognized him. People saw him and, and, and came to him. It says earlier, remember we studied this, 500 plus people recognized, saw, and knew the resurrected Jesus Christ. So that's the first question. That's an easy answer, yes. We'll go to heaven and we'll recognize our loved ones, those who have gone before us in the faith, who have, who have gone on to the church triumphant. We'll get to be with them and we'll get to see them and we'll get to celebrate with them and we'll get to have a great and glorious reunion with them uh, when that time comes. Here's the second question. And this is one that I get as a pastor from you. What about cremation? I've been asked this question several, several times, and it's generally asked by someone who's getting older uh, and is beginning to think about, you know, end of life decisions. What do they want to do? Are they going to get a casket or do they want to do they want to be cremated? Now, the number of cremations I've discovered after talking to the folks over at uh, Bourne Connor is, is actually gone up drastically in in recent years. 
And, and the reasons for that are not spiritual in nature, is what I've been told. It's actually a cost-saving measure for most people because they're much cheaper to, to do a cremation than it is to do the full uh, uh, rigmarole that goes with uh, a, an interment in, 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 uh, in, in uh, being buried, laid to rest six feet under the ground. And sometimes Christians question about all this. And sometimes they wonder, is it okay for a Christian to be cremated? Or is there something wrong with that sort of decision? Well, there's only one place in the Bible that mentions uh, cremation. In essence, it's talking about cremation. And that is found in 1 Samuel chapter 31. In 1 Samuel 31, let me give you a little bit of background. There's been a war going on, a battle going on uh, between um, Saul and uh, uh, another army. And uh, Saul and his son Jonathan, who you may have read about before, and others, a couple other sons, are killed. So this is, this is the scripture. It says, when the people of Jabesh Gilead heard what the Philistines had done to Saul. Now, what they did to Saul basically was, was take their bodies, Saul and his sons, and hang them up on a wall. Okay? Uh, when they'd heard what they'd done to Saul, all their valiant men from this town of Jabesh Gilead marched through the night to Beth Shan. They took down the bodies of Saul and his sons from the wall of Beth Shan and went to Jabesh where they burned them. They then took the bones and buried them under a tar tarmisk, uh, tar I can't even say words like that, uh, tamarisk tree uh, at Jabesh and there they fasted for seven days. Other than this story, that's the only time in scriptures that we read about a direct comment uh, about the cremation uh, of a body and it's a very neutral comment it doesn't say uh, an approval of it, it doesn't say a disapproval of it it's a very neutral comment in the first century uh, they did burial different than than we do today in the first century you were buried in a tomb first off you were wrapped like jesus was in, in strips of cloth you were sprinkled with with spices so that your body didn't smell that bad coming out of there the odor wasn't that bad out of the tomb and uh and so your body stayed in there for a couple of years a year or two maybe until all of your body basically decays except for the bones and then they would go in they would crack open the the tomb they would go in that's not your final resting place they would remove the bones and they would place them in in an ossuary now an ossuary box is about yay big it's as long as the longest bone in your body so what is this your femur here uh, it's as long as that bone that's as big as the box needed to be and so then they would put your remains in there and then intern you basically in that box in a family area another type of a tomb that had several of these multiple generations kept in one place in a, in a cave or, or a or a crypt of some sort of those sort of the deals and so this is what they knew uh, as burial. They knew that the body returned to ash, basically, and that the, the bones were left. The bottom line here is that the Bible doesn't say hardly anything directly uh, uh, about cremation. And what it does say, as I mentioned, is neither positive or negative. It's really neutral in what it says. But the Bible does have something to say indirectly about what happens in the same sense of cremation. And that is from Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, where we read these words. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and dust you will return. This is something that Paul references in our passage this morning when he says that uh, the first man was of the dust of the earth. And so in other words, one way or another, we will all return to the dust of the earth. We can do it more quickly through cremation uh, uh, and being placed in an urn, uh, but, but it's going to happen as well when we're placed into a casket. Our bodies are going to decay because they're earthly bodies. They're not meant to last forever. They're going to return to the dust. In essence, it might take 20 years or however long it takes for a body to decay that's in a casket but it's eventually going to do it either way here's what you need to know the point paul makes in first corinthians 15 is that we won't need to worry about our earthly bodies anymore our resurrected bodies are not made 
from the substance of our, our old bodies. They are made out of the stuff of heaven, if you will. Now, hear me out. I'm not trying to convince you either way about cremation or, or, or uh, uh, being interred uh, in a casket and, and lowered six feet in the ground. I'm, that, that is strictly a decision that you need to make uh, for yourselves. What I am trying to say is that our physical bodies aren't something that we're going to have to worry about. Otherwise... Uh, why would the, the martyrs uh, be in, in Revelations? It talks about the martyrs up there with, with God. Well, these martyrs, many of them were, were, were put on stakes and, and burned uh, alive for Nero's, uh, the, the Emperor Nero, when he was persecuting the, the Christians. Many of them were, were burned to ashes already. To say that they couldn't go to heaven because they, their bodies were turned to ashes, that just doesn't make sense. You get the picture? Either way, it's your decision. And either way, it's your choice. One way or another, our bodies will return to dust, whether they are burned up on the uh, are burned up our bodies in the ground or bury our bodies in the ground or we burn them up in a crematorium. Either way, we who have placed our faith in Jesus Christ will one day receive a new body. And this new body, man, it's good. It, it's a body that doesn't have hair loss. It's a body that doesn't have cancer. It's a body that doesn't have indigestion. It's a body that doesn't have uh, 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 digestive issues. It's a body that will not see decay. It's a body that's made to live forever with our Lord in heaven. And folks, that's good news. Amen? Amen. What is this new body? It is imperishable. It is raised in glory. And it is heavenly in nature. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Raise your hand if you've ever heard a sermon on cremation before. <laughs> nope, this is the first time for me too. All right, our closing song this morning is, uh, uh, let me find it here, is Freely, Freely. If you're here this morning, God's moving your heart and life. You're ready to publicly profess your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. We invite you to come forward. Let's celebrate that with you and, and pray with you. If you want to become a member, we want to talk to you about that and what that means. Uh, and uh, talk to you here with you, the mission and vision of the church. All right, we always have the up and down popcorn thing going. Let's stand up and sing. <laughs> sin in Jesus name I've been born again in Jesus name and in Jesus name I come to you to share his love as he told me to he said freely freely you have received been good to be together in the Lord's house today amen. amen next week in early service we've got a couple of little boys that are going to be uh, uh, Brody and James are going to be baptized so uh, that's something to look forward to uh, uh, they'll be taking place like I said in early service next week so exciting to see how the Lord is at work here in the church in us and through us calling us to be his children but also calling us to share the light and love of Jesus Christ with the world so go and do just that in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Don't forget about the Board of Stewards.